from day one have been saying it's not about technology. Okay? Even though we talk about technology adoption life cycle, it's really not about technology. So what is a new category? And let me start with the iPad. Did Apple create a new category with the iPad? Was it an extension of ebooks? Was it an extension of something else? Okay. Who cares, right? I want one. Yes? Um, now, as a strategist, as a product strategist, why do you care about new categories, about whether a product is in a new category or not? Does that make a difference? The answer is it makes all the difference because, uh, I, let, let me keep going, okay? Now, today it's obvious that the iPad created a new category, tablets. Now, tablets are synonymous with iPad. Good luck to everyone else. Right? Because the, the iPad actually created this whole new category. But at the time, just two years ago, it, wa it was not obvious. And this is from an article, just to give you an indication, uh, in the New York Times. Uh, you know, Apple was positioning it as a new genre, meaning a new category. Right? And look at what Steve Jobs said. It's more intimate than a laptop. Look at the positioning right? It's more intimate than a laptop, but more capable than a smartphone. See that positioning? Uh, but basically, they were positioning it as a new category, okay? Um, on the other hand, you look uh, at an, what an analyst would say, and he would say, well, you know what? This is a big iPod touch, okay? So it wasn't obvious to this guy uh, at Forrester whether it was a new category or not. In fact, he didn't think so. He thought it was just an extension, just a bigger uh, iPod touch. Uh, and then a VC would say, well, you know, it's kind of like an ebook reader, and there is room for both the Kindle and the, uh, the Amazon Kindle, right? So. When a new product comes out in general, uh, it's not always obvious whether it's a new category, okay? But as a strategist, you have to know. You have to know because it makes all the difference whether you are at the beginning of the life cycle, in the middle, or at the end, okay? Your strategy is going to radically change. That's one thing, and two, um, if it's a new category, which you want it to be, then the game is open to anybody to win. And especially in high technology markets, and especially when there are network effects, which I'm going to talk about, the winner is going to take all. And so... In new categories, you have a chance to be a winner. In an existing category, it's hard to gain market share from existing players. Does that make sense? It's much more difficult. Now, you don't have the choice whether it's a new category or not. Okay, but you have to know whether it is or not because your strategy is going to be radically different. Um, so, let me ask you, has anyone seen the Acer Iconia? Is it a PC? Is it a tablet? I mean, it's like, it's like two tablets, right? But it's like a PC. When did that come out? About a year ago, I would say. <laughs> exactly, right? Is it an extension of, is it a PC? I mean, what is it, really? And again, why, sh why should you care? Um, so what is a new uh, product category? And I want to try and define it, even though th there isn't a clear uh, definition out there. So 
One definition is that it's a discrete groups of similar or related products. Okay? They look more like one another than like anyone else. That's one type of definition. Um, so you have the PC category, uh, you have the tablet category, you have the smartphone category, you have the electric vehicle category and so on. Does that make sense? Okay. The lines are sometimes blurred. You know, it's a hybrid, an internal combustion engine car. Is it an EV? Is it none of the above or both, right? Um, another definition that I like better is that it's products that are grouped together to reflect customer needs based on how the product is used, consumed, or purchased. Meaning this takes the point of view of the user rather than the technology. So it's not about uh, what the technology does, but about what the user does with it, how he or she uses it. And that's how you would put together a product category. Okay? Um, so if you go to the website of D-Link, for instance, um, you know, basically they would say, here are the categories of products. Wireless networking and 3D, 3G mobile routers, network adapt adapters, switches. Each one of these is a category. They're used for something slightly different, right? Does this make sense so far? Yeah? Okay. Now, um, for strategy purposes, we're concerned not about technology, not about innovation per se, but about product categories. Think of them as a standalone business. Okay? Think of them as a standalone business. Just because you add a radical innovation to a product does not mean uh, that you have a new category. If you add 4G to a smartphone, does that make a smartphone a new category? No, it does not, right? It's super duper and this and that, but it's not a new category per se, okay? Um, so you need to ask yourself whether the innovation that you have, the technology that you have is an ingredient or an extension of an existing category. Do you know the difference? So I used to, many lives ago, work at a company called RSA, Data Security. Yeah? So RSA is the encryption that is pretty much in every browser out there. So the SSL between uh, pretty much every browser on the web and the servers is built on RSA technology. Um, and RSA technology is not a product. It's an ingredient. Okay? It's like a spice. You want it there, but you don't eat spices all by themselves. I assume some people do, but, you know, they're, they're ingredients, right? They're not the main course. Um, so you need to ask yourself whether it's an ingredient or an extension. So bigger, better, speedier, and whatnot is an extension, right? Uh, or your innovation can help create a new category, like the iPad. And that's a big question, again. Um, usually some combination of technologies can help create categories. Uh, and sometimes one technology will make all the difference. So... Before you develop your go-to-market strategy, you need to answer the following question. Is this a new category? And if so, where in the category, uh, where in the adoption life cycle is this category? Not if so, no matter what. Okay, yes. In the previous slide, you showed where you said the market strategy may be different. Mm -hmm. I will. Throughout the rest of the class, that's what I'm going to talk about. Okay? Um, so, did Apple create a new category with the iPad? Now, we know the answer is yes. 
But was there any radical technology in the iPad? Really? Was there anything that was radical that was not available to anyone else? Yes? Well, so it's, it's a new category because they put so many different ingredients together. Is that why it's a new category? Mm -hmm. Good answer, but not exactly, right? Yes? Absolutely. You say that they created a new product category. I think like a lot of it had to do with marketing and just obviously taking some of jobs, but obviously they went nowhere, right? Yeah. So they didn't create anything. So if the public isn't aware of it, it's not a new category. If it doesn't, you know, if, if people don't buy it, then it's not a new category, right? It's just, you know, a product. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so there has to be a market developed in order for it to be a category, right? Um, and, and it's okay, and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that because most of the time we talk about uh, markets that have gone through their S-curves and this and that, but we don't talk about the products that went nowhere. And that's more than 90% of the products out there, right? They just go nowhere, okay? But let me come back to that. Um, so again, back to the Acer. How do you know? What is the question that you need to ask yourself? Okay? So here is the set of questions that you need to ask yourself. New category. Is it a fundamentally different way of doing things? That's what you have to ask yourself. Is it a fundamentally new way of doing things? Of course, in, 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 in ways that users care about. And this is from the user point of view, right? Is it a fundamentally new way of doing things? So, um, you know, imagine when the airplane first came out. And the airplane is 10x the speed of the car or the, the you know, horse or whatever. You could go from New York to California in six hours, as opposed to three months, as opposed to three weeks, right? Does that make sense? That's a 10x improvement in a dimension that I think most people would care about. That would be a new category. So an airplane versus a car versus a horse. We have fundamentally different categories. Does that make sense? Okay, versus a ship, Versus, so these are different modes of transportation. Um, in general, new categories have um, order of magnitude improvements, like I just mentioned. Airplane is a 10x improvement on travel, right? Whether it's to Europe, to the East Coast, or whatever. But the thing that you have to be careful is that these are order of magnitude improvements in dimensions that the user cares about, that are valuable to the user, right? So again, if you come up with a smartphone that's 10x faster than uh, you know, the, the, the existing smartphones, would that make them a new category? I don't think so, right? I mean, it would be neat and cool and all that, but it's not a new category. So it would not be a dimension uh, that would be valuable to consumers. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? I mean, this is really important, right? Um, so existing categories would be incremental improvements. Uh, vendors would use the existing supply chain. In a new category, you could use the existing supply chain, but in many cases, you actually have to create a new supply chain because the existing one does not have room or uh, does not know how to handle your, uh, that new category. For instance, electric vehicles, right? Electric vehicles, you would need a new supply chain because th these are different kinds of, you know, I mean, Tesla uses electric motors, 
not internal combustion engine motors. They uh, use uh, batteries. They don't use I mean, uh, all kinds of uh, uh, you know, hundreds and hundreds of parts that an internal combustion engine would use and so on, right? So Tesla, one of the difficult things for an EV company has been to create a brand new supply chain. Does that make sense? Yes. So would you say that Tesla's supply chain is more complicated than like this or automotive? So the question is, would Tesla's supply chain be uh, more complex than Fisker? No. I mean, there's no reason why they, they can't both use the existing, the same supply chain. They would both fall in the same category, right? Luxury electric vehicles. Um, so no, I mean, you know, they could use the same uh, battery suppliers, they could use the same electric uh, motor suppliers, and so on and so forth. There's no reason why they shouldn't.